we're just looking at the wrap up of the first round of the parliamentary election and I think there's significant doubt now. What do you make of the showing by the left and the amount of anger that still lingers in the electorate on the back of the presidential elections that we witnessed a few weeks back? Good morning. Well, first of all, the thing that needs to be said is that it's quite unexpected, you know, to be in such a neck to neck situation because Emmanuel Macron just seven weeks ago, you know, came out as a winner of a French presidential election and no one was really expecting that he would have to face a, such a strong opposition. But what happened in between is that a coalition was created that ranges from the center left, the former socialist party who was in office, to uh, uh, the uh, friends on both by Jean-Luc Mélenchon, you know, and in between you get the Communist Party and the Green Party. And this coalition, which, you know, give or take, uh, gathers all that there is to the left, uh, was able to, uh, to, uh, to, to put up a strong opposition. And that, you know, leads to yesterday's, uh, yesterday's showing where, you know, like you got two parties exactly at the same level. That should not exactly translate into the same number of seats. And I think that the projections that you mentioned lead to a very different result. You're going to have the opposition, the left opposition, getting, you know, 160 to 200 uh, seats, whereas the, the stake for Emmanuel Macron is to reach 289. And this is where it could get tricky, but he will certainly gather the majority in the parliament. Having covered a lot of Macron's uh, time in office and even in the lead up to the last election, it feels as though this is a man who wants to leave a legacy that uh, even if he does win this majority, that over the next few years, he's still going to have to do something to try and stem the anger. And if we think about the policies now from the left, a lot of them around cost of living crisis, about minimum wages going up and freezes on prices and energy uh, escalation that we've seen lately. Do you think that the pull of the left is going to be a fairly dramatic force now for Macron, no matter what the outcome is in a week's time? I mean, for sure, they're going to have a majority or you know, what is expected to be a majority, the Macron majority, is going to have a hard time in parliament because let us recall that uh, in the previous uh, term, uh, the France and Boat by Jean-Luc Mélenchon had 17 MPs, and they were quite vocal, you know, and they were, you know, uh, uh, opposing Macron quite uh, quite vividly. So, you know, multiply that by almost tenfold, and uh, you reach, you know, what could be the next parliament. In addition to that, it's quite likely that the parliament is going to be much more uppity with much more power to uh, this leftist co this left coalition. And that could lead, in fact, to uh, Emmanuel Macron having much more trouble uh, passing his agenda. But once again, you know, uh, there's some glimmer of hope for him because uh, he could seek alliances, uh, not so much on the left, which is quite unlikely, but to the right. Uh, he could find, you know, in the Conservative Party some allies. And as his project has you know, slowly shifted, uh, drifted to the right, you know, he could find a couple dozen MPs who would be, I guess, you know, interested in working with him. Uh, Etienne, so that group of the left, the NUP or NUPES, depending on who uh, pronounce it, uh, so this group of um, communists, so socialists and the Greens, how, how much of a cohesion this group is really going to have in Parliament? And what kind of opposition will that be for Emmanuel Macron? Well, that's a good question, and I guess not a lot of people know about that at the moment, because, as you say, you know, they come from different uh, different parties, they have somewhat different ideologies, uh, and just seven weeks ago, uh, they were campaigning one against the other. Now, I think that in Parliament, that shouldn't be too much of a problem for them, because they have already said that they, each of them would have their own group, and that they would just, you know, mildly coordinate uh, with uh, weekly meetings. So I don't think that, you know, for them, as long as they remain in the opposition, that should be a major trouble. Etienne, just a quick question from me. Um, it, it's looking like it's going to be a long, hot summer for Europe. Um, the Gilets jaunes, if they were about anything, it was a protest about the cost of living and how some of the reforms were likely to affect household income. Are we at risk of another hot summer of protest in Paris and throughout the country as uh, I, I think the vote from the election really was a, an anti-politician vote, and I suspect what we may see in these assembly votes is a similar outcome. Are we going to see the yellow jackets back on the streets? 
Interesting. So I think that already in 2017, we had an anti-politician uh, campaign because Emmanuel Macron, in fact, ran a campaign against political professionalization. Uh, he himself posed as a maverick who could transform politics. And, you know, that didn't really quite happen. In fact, they're not, you know, investing uh, any new uh, any new MPs this time that has no uh, experience in politics, but to go back to your question about uh, about uh, of the yellow vest, yes, it's quite likely that there's going to be some sort of of protest, you know, going on in France because the cost of the cost of living, you know, is uh, as you know rising very fast. And I wouldn't be surprised that uh, the unrest has not been, you know, completely. Uh, uh, covered and tamed, you know, during uh, the last uh, the last term. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a perspective. And Tino Leon, thank you so much for joining us today, senior research fellow at CNRS.